Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of our Flinch Squad Circuit Review Show. We are here in the Ultra Series now, kicking off in week one this week in the Ultra Series. Now we've shaken things up a little bit from the Sun Series and the Moon Series and we've restructured how the Ultra Series circuit is going to be running. Now we've got 22 players taking part in the Ultra Series circuit this season. It's going to be fantastic. We're going to have some incredible games. But before we get into anything, just to explain the Ultra Series season structure, and we'll get into that right now. So as you can see on your screen right now, the players are gonna start off with a Swiss bracket. So it will be five weeks, five rounds of Swiss through each week. So each week we will be featuring one game from that specific game week until we reach the next stage of the competition, which will split all of the players into group stages as you can see here we will move from the swiss rounds this is the seeding part of the ultra series circuit and then we move into a group round robin situation and this is where we will feature a few more games each week of the series covering each group stage before moving on to a top cut and a knockout style tournament where we then eventually crown our ultra series champion of the circuit it's going to be so exciting so that is the structure of the tournament as I say we've got 22 players kicking us off today but we're going to feature one match in particular and by featuring one match it means that we've got a bit more time to analyze it look at it really feature these players each and every week before we get into these group stages and see them duke it out at the early parts of the ultra series as they're fighting for that seeding to go into those group stages which is going to be the next segment of the ultra series circuit so without further ado let's get into the pairings for week one as you can see on your screen we've got the pairings here you've got Chansey Mansi versus Xenophis Deus, you've got Alex versus Costa, Salkran VGC versus Yorine, Krim versus Luigi, Pokemarty VGC versus Salty Electabuzz, Stu2906 versus Cameron, Nightlight26 versus Will, Nappy versus Marcus, Wormseye versus Pinko VGC, Kazumi versus Johnny Hacks, and Shade versus Ryan PB Hibbert. So, this is an incredible way for us to kick off this week. One of the first matches that we're going to feature this week going into the ultra series is going to be between our second place runner-up in the moon series stew 2906 versus our newcomer to the circuit cameron so without further ado guys let's jump into this first game today and i hope you enjoy it as always if you do enjoy this content please make sure to leave a like on the video do subscribe to the channel for more pokemon content and leave your comments in the comment section below letting me know what your thoughts are on the featured game today and if you've got any players that you would like to see featured in the future and who you're rooting for going into this ultra series circuit so as i say without further ado guys let's get into this first one today which will be between Stu and cameron so we'll kick straight off into it and you can see Stu on the bottom of your screen and Cameron on the top of your screen. As you see, Stu challenging Cameron here in that nice polo shirt. And now doing it in a little bit slowed down, makes it a lot easier now for me. So we're going to see Cameron lead off with the Togekiss and Mandibus. Very interesting lead, not something you see so often in the Ultra Series. And also something not so seen very often from Stu as well with that Porygon 2 pairing up with that Tapu Lele. Now we do see the Psychic terrain activate on the lele the download ability activate on that porygon too we do see just a follow me this turn one coming out from cameron so okay it's going to pull in all attacks and protect that mandibus going into this first one as we see a psychinium z fired up from this type of lele it is going to be the shattered psyche and it will be into that Togekiss because of the follow me. So Togekiss known for being quite a bulky Pokemon is probably able to take this. But at the same time Cameron probably not appreciating all the damage that the Togekiss is going to take here. Because it takes it a little bit out of the game for the rest of this game. And you know it depends what this. Oh wow it actually picks up the knockout. I was expecting it to survive there. Big KO there for Stu taking a huge advantage turn one. Foul play coming out from the Mandibuzz into the Porygon 2, doing some nice damage there as we see a Trick Room set up from the, the little P2 there. So Dimensions turned for the next five turns here as we see Cameron now switching his Groudon in place of that Fallen Togekiss. So Primal Groudon going to make its appearance to the field, use that Red Orb, activate that and bring itself to the field with that Desolate Land ability, bringing the Sun with it. And you've got to think in, in Trick Room, 
room now. Groudon's probably in not a bad place. It's definitely going to be under speeding that Tapu Lele, you would imagine, and doing some really threatening attacks towards that slot. We're going to see a Thunderbolt fired out from Stu into the Mandibuzz here, doing some nice chip damage with that Thunderbolt there. Mandibuzz firing out another foul play. It is going to be into the Tapu Lele this time, doing some big damage there. And a Precipice Blades, the Groudon does under speed that Lele, and is going to hit both targets here, doing some big damage, taking the Lele down and taking the Porygon 2 down to just under 50% health so we see the Groudon now hit the field for Stu it is that shiny lovely ugly green Groudon but it is going to transform into the beautiful primal Groudon which is much better as a shiny form and I'm sure you all agree with me but we see Stu with the trick room set here you've got to imagine his Groudon is going to be in a really nice position now to probably go before the opposing Groudon on cram inside of the field and fire off a Precipice Blades first. We do actually just see an eruption come out from Stu's Groudon. It is a special variant or maybe a mixed variant. T-Bolt into that Mandibuzz followed by that eruption is enough to take it down so it does leave the field and Groudon on Cameron so the field going to chuck out another Precipice Blades does hit both targets. It is shaky accuracy. Not quite enough to pick up the knockout on the Porygon 2 leaving it with 4 HP here and the Rayquaza coming in on the field for Cameron now. It has got that airlock ability and you would think uh, if this Psychic Terrain wasn't active the Rayquaza could have a really nice time just using that extreme speed to get rid of the Porygon 2 here in Stu's side of the field. But unfortunately, as long as that Psychic Terrain's up, the extreme speed is blocked. So we do see the requires a Mega Revolve. We're going to get this lovely Delta Stream animation overwriting the Desolate Land here for the next turns. As we see the Groudon on Cameron's side of the field, just protect, trying to stall out this tail this trick room here as we see a recover from the Porygon 2 just going to get all that health back put itself above 50% now and in a way better position going into this next turn as we see an earth power from Stu's Groudon into the protect on Cameron's Groudon and a Dragon Ascent coming out from the Rayquaza. It is going to be into that Porygon 2 slot, so I'm going to try and deny a second Trick Room being set up here to close out this game for Cameron, but still not quite enough as the Rayquaza does take that defense and special defense drop off the back of that Dragon Ascent. Now the Groudon on Cameron's side going for the double protect and actually gets it. That's a huge turn for Cameron to stall out this last turn of the Trick Room as we are going to see the Porygon 2 just go for another recover here. Get its health back above 50% now in threat of a potential a Dragon Ascent coming out. The Earth Power into Protect blocked and another Dragon Ascent coming out now from this Rayquaza, but this time not targeting that Porygon 2, going into the Primal Groudon on Stu's side of the field and will be enough to pick up the knockout here. Stu's still got one Pokemon left in the back though, so it'll be interesting to see what that is and if it can come in and deal with these two threats on the field right now. The Dimensions turn back to normal and the Psychic Terrain does disappear, so Rayquaza now got access to that extreme speed if it wants to. We do see the Mawile hit the field for Stu. It does get the Intimidate cycle onto the Groudon and Rayquaza here on Cameron's side of the field. So what are we gonna see? We're gonna see a Protect from the Mawile and potentially try and get a Trick Room from Porygon 2, but that's very obvious here and the Groudon Rayquaza could quite happily just double into that to deny it. So be interesting to see how Stu adapts here. We've got to see an Overheat from the Rayquaza though. It's a mixed set and it does fire into the Mawile. Pick up the big knockout there. That is huge there for Cameron revealing that game one and picking up a crucial knockout there with the Rayquaza who's putting so much work the ground on now showing all its might throwing up a sword stance boosting that attack stat by two stages putting it back to plus one now and a trick room once again set up from this Porygon 2 but it might seem a little too far gone for this little P2 to claw back this match from this point as we do see the forfeit from Stu and we go straight into game two so big win there for Cameron and the other heat reveal there at the end of game one was pretty huge and a really nice twist to the game where you think the mobile is going to come in trick room is going to get set up and maybe Stu's got a way to come back into it but that overheat just denying it there completely and closing the game up for Stu. We're going to see Cameron lead off with that Togekiss Mandibuzz once again and Stu changing things up now with the Mega Mawile or the Mawile leading out with that Tapu Lele. So we do see the Intimidate drop onto the Mandibuzz and that Togekiss here 
first turn for Stu, and we are going to see the Moal just switch straight out. Preserve that for later, as Eveltal now is brought by Stu and hits the field, so it's going to bring that Dark Aura ability with it, meaning that the Manda Buzz's foul players will be hitting that a little bit harder now, as we see the Togekiss just protect this turn, doesn't want to take another shot at Psyche this first turn like it did in game one, and Cameron just lose it automatically. We are going to see that shot at Psyche now from Stu. He is firing it off again into that slot. Remember, he can't be firing it into that Manda Buzz slot because it is immune because of the dark type in there and we are going to see the shadow psyche it's obviously not going to do as much damage going into this next turn and we as it is through the protect here and we are going to just see it bounce around and do not quite as much damage as that first time so nice protect there from cameron as we see a foul play come out from the mana bus so talking down the lele here it is yeah just making sure that it is doing damage to that before it can do too much to cameron's side of the field i'm going to see a follow me this time come out from the toga kiss now as we see the tapu lele go for a moon blast here it is trying to target that mana bus you would imagine but now into that toga kiss still doing respectable damage as we see a snarl come out from the Eveltal not really messing around or worrying the mandibus too much and the the toga kiss at the moment just perform that kind of support role mm, Stu really needs to try and concentrate and get rid of that as soon as possible we do see the mandibus now set the tailwind up for Cameron's side of the field for the next three turns so the tabulele in a little bit of trouble now for Stu does protect here doesn't want to take any unnecessary damage and Stu doesn't want to lose it too freelessly but we are going to see an on call from the toga kiss into the veltal now it is going to lock it into that snarl and prevent it from taking any big attacks any further we're going to see that foul play into the lele as we do see just another snarl from the Veltal uh, hitting both targets and doing some nice chip damage along the way so Veltal really kind of stuck in a bad place at the minute maybe wants to switch out this next turn um, but it's saying that the Tabulele also in a really tight spot because the Mandibus pressuring here and this tailwind with those foul players we are going to see the Primal Groudon now hit the field for Cameron he is going to get this Primal Reversion activated Groudon going to hit the field, activate that desolate land along with it, and in the tailwind it becomes a huge threat for Stu side of the field, and he really needs to start kind of maneuvering himself around a little bit better now. We are going to see the foul play come out, it is going to be into that type of Lele, it will pick up the knockout here, so Stu does lose the Lele, but in the same respect of losing the Lele, you do get a free switch in on your side of the field if that is something that you want, it might be something that does help him reposition his board position get a bit of advantage going into this next turn because at the minute he's in a lot of trouble because this tailwind on Cameron's side of the field now you've got to think he probably protects his ground on as it now comes onto the field and it is pressured from the precipice blades from Cameron you know the foul play precipice blades is probably enough to pick up the knockout onto this ground on on Stu's side of the field so he's got to be aware of that wants to stall out this last turn of trick room and hopefully we see the event or maybe kick out of that encore we are going to see the Groudon on Cameron's side of the field just lock straight into a sword stance could this be punishment for him maybe thinking that Stu's going to protect here and if he throws out an earth power into that slot that is huge for Stu because he's going to pull this game right back into his favor and it is the earth power here it is into the Groudon it will be enough to pick up the knockout there and really punishing Cameron for thinking that maybe Stu is going for the protect there but yeah, we're going to see the World Wind now come out from the Manda Buzz. It is going to be into the Avelto and kind of doing it a favour almost by really undoing those um, on-call lock that it is into. We're going to see the Mowile come back onto the field, cycle another Intimidate onto that Manda Buzz. As the Tailwind does pitter out and the Psychic Terrain does disappear. Now Rayquaza are going to hit the field for Cameron. So not straightforward here, but it is threatened quite heavily from this Mega Mobile on Stu's side of the field. So Cameron has to be very careful around that. And now that he's lost the ground on it makes life a lot easier for that Mobile in the rest of the game. We're going to see the Eveltal now hit the field, activate that Dark Aura once again as we do see the Mega Rayquaza on Cameron's side of the field. Go for that Mega Evolution. It's going to override the Desolate Land and activate the Delta Stream and bring that mysterious air to the field as we are about to see with this glorious animation that we all love and keep going on about in this format early doors so we're going to see an overheat straight away from the Rayquaza trying to snipe that more while like it did in game one but not going to work this time as Stu switch
which is a near Veltal. Takes it pretty comfortably. Takes the minus two as well in the special attack as we see another Tailwind set up from this Mana Buzz. What we're going to see this Groudon do, it just goes for an eruption here. It is going to be doing some nice damage to the Mana Buzz, but resisted by the Rayquaza. And Mana Buzz actually shown it's pretty decent bulk here, taking that eruption pretty comfortably. I'm going to see a Protect now from the Groudon as it doesn't want to take any damage as we see a Dragon Ascent into that slot from the Rayquaza on Cameron's side of the field and a Roost coming out for the Mana Buzz. Mana Buzz saying, no, I don't want to go down too early. I've got this Tailwind to set up and I've got more Tailwinds to set up further along the line. So we just see a foul play from the Uvelto taking this opportunity into the Rayquaza. Is it enough? It is enough to pick up the knockout onto the Rayquaza. So that is a big turn there for Stu, picking up a quick knockout there and taking away that Delta Stream with Cameron down to just the Togger kiss and the mind buzz now and you think he's probably in a decent position to close this one up we are going to see an air slash come out from this toga kiss fishing for those flinches on the veltal as a foul player now coming out from the mind buzz going to be into the ground on doing some big damage there Eveltal does flinch and an eruption coming out from the ground on is it enough to pick up the toga kiss it's not in the sun and it's not the toga kiss just hangs on barely we're going to see a sucker punch now the next turn come out into the toga kiss pick up that knockout from the Eveltal here and it is Mandibuzz versus the world now as another foul player comes out from the Mandibuzz into the Groudon and it will be enough to pick up the knockout here but with that Moal lurking in the back for Stu, you've got to think it's only going to be a matter of time before he is able to close this one up. The, the Mandibuzz is just not in a position to even get damage onto the Moal here with the foul player, it's just not going to be doing it enough and uh, it will be able to clean up pretty easily here we are going to get to see it though so the man the mobile is going to mega evolve here and it is going to transform into that beautiful mega pokemon that it is it will see a oblivion wing from the veltal into the mander buzz here just do some nice damage there get some health back for this eveltal just keep it on the field for a little bit longer if Stu needs it to and we are going to see the mander buzz go for that foul play where is it going to be? Is it going to be into the Mawile? You've got to think it is, yes. But do, it doesn't do too bad damage for a resisted attack. It's just thanks to that huge power, I think. And then the player rough coming out doesn't miss and picks up a nice knockout. And Stu pulling this game back to 1-1. One, one. So we are going to be seeing a game three today. And we'll jump straight into it. It's been a really, really tasty set so far so hopefully this third game doesn't disappoint as well and I've already seen one Pokemon that's quite interesting that Stu will be bringing on his side of the field so it'll be interesting to see how this performs in this match we do see Cameron just come out with that same lead that's worked for him in these last two games so well as we see Stu switch it up now we're going to see the Groudon come out with that all faithful from the 2017 season Lilligan so it is going to have that chlorophyll ability its speed will be doubled in the sun with which is brought by that desolate land ability of the primal ground on here and Stu's side of the field. So there it is activating and along with it that chlorophyll ability on the Lilligan acting along with it. So we're going to be pretty careful because we can see something like an after you eruption here come out it has access to sleep powder mana buzz obviously not affected by that but we are just seeing that after you and we probably will see the eruption from the ground on here and it will be into that mana buzz the togekiss just protecting this turn doesn't want to take any big damage here as the mana buzz is probably in a position to take this and set up a tailwind for cameron and that's exactly what we see here just trying to get the speed advantage over that Lilligant and the Groudon, but you've got to think, does the Togekiss, can it actually outspeed the Lilligant? That's the big problem. We are going to see the Groudon now hit the field for Cameron, place of that Mandibuzz, it is going to Primal Revert once again, and bring to the field the big bad Primal Groudon. So, the thing is, like I was saying, the Lilligant still probably outspeeds the Togekiss, so it's probably going to be able to get the after you or sleep powder but we do see the sleep powder and it goes into the safety goggles on the togekiss so really nice tech there togekiss now in tailwind is able to outspeed the groudon but not get the flinch this turn and an eruption does come out but it is weakened from that air slash so that's a really nice play there trying to weaken that attack groudon on the field for stew and um, for cameron here is putting a lot of pressure on the groudon on stew side of the field we do see in uh, follow me and the after you going into that togekiss really smart play here we do see the precipice blades come out it does miss the lilligant which is a bit unfortunate it goes into the ground on is it enough it's not quite enough it does hang on and he gets the earth power but obviously into that follow me which is not affected that togekiss because of his flying type there really nice play there for cameron just protecting that ground on as best it can especially with the safety goggles 
tiles that the Togekiss does have access to now, really shutting down this type of lead. We're going to see another follow me from the Togekiss here. Precipice Blades again from the Groudon on Cameron's side of the field. And it does avoid the Groudon. That is devastating. And we see your Precipice Blades now revealed from Stu. It's going to be back into the Groudon here. It's not It's not quite enough to pick up the knockout. I didn't think it would be as the, the Tailwind does pitter out. And this Lilligant now in a really nice position with that Tailwind ending. We are going to see it just switch out, preserve it for later as we see the Eveltal now hit the field for Stu as it does bring that Dark Aura back on the field with it. As we see the Groudon on Cameron's side of the field just protect here. Doesn't want to take any unnecessary damage as the Togger case goes for an Air Slash into this Groudon. This will be enough to pick up the knockout and Cameron getting rid of that Primal Groudon once and for all. So pretty tight match up to now. It'll be interesting to see how things unfold going forward. We are going to see the Tapulela now hit the field for Stu. Now that Groudon has just protected on Cameron's side of the field, so it is going to be prone to a potential Shattered Psyche into that slot, but you've got to think, does the Mandibuzz come in here? We are going to see the Groudon switch out for Cameron, and it is the Mandibuzz just predicting maybe a Shattered Psyche into that slot, but it was solo health anyway. You've got to think maybe you target the Togekiss if you're Stu just to get rid of that support option here. I'm going to see just a taunt, no Shattered Psyche come out into that Togekiss, but it is blocked by the Protect as we see a Snarl come out from the Veltal, and it is going to do a little bit of chip damage and maybe put that Mandibuzz into range from a Moonblast now as a special attack does drop from that Snarl. We're going into the next turn, we just see a Follow Me, so the Togekiss trying to support that Mandibuzz as best it can, avoiding those Moonblasts that could be quite devastating, but we're just going to see a Shattered Psyche come out from the Lele, it's not messing around here, wants to remove that Togekiss from the field and it unleashes this Z-move and we all know that it will be enough to pick up the Knockout onto the Togekiss and remove it from the field, so big turn here from Stu. Going to be able to tie up this game and, and take down the Togger Kiss. And we've seen how much work it's put in this game so far. So being able to remove this one option here is a really nice way for Stu to kind of pull himself back into this game. We're probably going to see a Tailwind from the Mandibuzz as an Oblivion Wing goes into that slot from the Eveltal. Doing some nice damage here. Taking it down into about 20% health range as the Tailwind is now set up. And priming that Groudon for the return when it comes back onto the field now for Cameron. And that's what we are going to see. The Groudon is very low health but it doesn't have to worry about a sucker punch here because it has got the psychic terrain pre protecting it this turn going into this one but where does he target does he go precipice blades or does he go fire punch the tabulele on stew side of the field going to protect in case the precipice blade does come out the event are going to try probably to pick up a ko here onto the ground on it does see the fire punch from cameron's side into that event Mandibuzz going for a roost here going to heal up all of that damage that's already been done and the event you got to think it will be attacking into that ground on to remove it from the field but we just see a snarl it's going to be enough to probably pick up the ground on anyway and just get a little bit of chip damage onto the mandibuzz at the same time so Groudon going down for Cameron and Stu looking like he's in not a bad position going into the rest of this game you think that Cameron's probably got the Rayquaza in the back which comes in now it is in Tailwind but at the same time if the the Mowile's in the back for Stu like we've already seen it then it comes in gets the Intimidate drop and it can put a lot of pressure onto this Rayquaza pretty quickly. We aren't going to see any switches though straight up. We're just going to see this Mega Rayquaza Mega Evolve and activate that Delta Stream along with it and get the Mysterious Air but it has to really target into this Tapu Lele. It is threatened by a Moonblast. We are going to see an Extreme Speed into the Eveltal not protected by the Psychic Terrain. A foul play into that slot as well. It is going to pick up the knockout there but this leaves the Tapu Lele free to get a Moonblast off into either target. Both weak to the fairy type attack here as we see a moonblast into the Rayquaza probably taking it down to a sash is it going to be oh it's not quite doing as much as I thought it would that is a nice bulky Rayquaza and because of the reveal of the overheat earlier on in the game maybe it indicates that it is an assault vest variant now I forget that the Lilligant is the one Pokemon in the back here so Cameron in a nice position to close things up here we are going to see a dragon ascent into the Lilligant it is going to do big damage take it down to a sash though it isn't enough Enough to take it out and the knockout there it is activating that focus sash so they're going to stick around for at least one more turn 
here as we see the special attack special drop go on the Rayquaza with the foul play coming out into the Lilligan doubling into that slot maybe you should have went for the Lele here because you would have picked up the knockout rather than that Lilligan but maybe predicting that the Lele goes for a protect here does get the Moonblast into that Rayquaza picking up the knockout here and it's just Mandibuzz versus the Tapu Lele now and you've got to wonder is the Tapu Lele strong enough to pick up a knockout as this Tailwind ends and the Psychic Turin disappears from the field. Mandibuzz has got a lot of health left but we do you see the taunt come out from the Lele, going to deny any Tailwind, going to deny any Roost, as we see it go for the Roost this turn, and this pretty much wraps it up for Stu, because we know the Lele can take at least one foul player, two Moonblasts should be enough here, so a really nice way to end the game, but not needing two, just needing one, I'm surprised it took it down from that range, but very powerful, and such a good set from both players, so Stu taking game one that we're featuring in week one um, in a 2-1 victory so massive props to both players there what a way for us to kick off this week it's been incredible thank you so much to Stu and Cameron for putting forward the video replays this week to be featured in this this episode and I hope you guys at home have enjoyed it it's been incredible we've seen some really odd picks that you don't see so much in the ultra series being used here obviously the Porygon 2 a really nice pick and you saw how well it kind of coped with the big damage from the Rayquaza and the Groudon and things like that and did a decent job but then Stu kind of reassessing his board and, and really adapting his game plan to really maneuver around what Cameron was bringing because he was putting on so much pressure from the start of the game getting that tailwind set up that was really hard to deny from the Mandibuzz especially with that Togekiss support with the follow me and both Pokemon taking so much damage and Cameron kind of put off from that Shattered Psyche game one where he lost the Togekiss he wanted to be a bit more careful with it and we saw how much work it put in games two and games three a really nice game for us to kick off with today I will bring up the results from this week so now on your screen you can see the results for this first round of the Swiss going into the Ultra Series We've got Chansey Mansi beating Xenophis Days 2 0. Stu, as we see in our feature match, beating Cameron 2 1. Shade 2 1 against Ryan PP Herbert and Pokemarty versus Salty Electabuzz. Salty Electabuzz there winning 2 0. Kazumi 1, Johnny Hacks 2. Krim 1, Luigi 2. Worm's Eye 2, Pinko, VGC 0. Salkrin 1, Yorine off to a good start 2 1 in that match. Nappy 0, Marcus 2. Alex nil, Costa 2 and Nightlight 26-2 and Will 0. So some incredible results there, really interesting results. And it's going to be interesting to see how these players adapt going forward in the Ultra Series. There's no team lock in the Swiss rounds here. We get a team lock starting in the group stages, but that will be in week 6. It's going to be really exciting seeing the players and where they're kind of what groups they're put into going forward in this tournament to progress to that next knockout stage of the event so do stay tuned guys we'll have an episode every week covering the flinch squad circuit review show as i say we're featuring one game from the swiss rounds each week until we get to the group stages where we'll open things up and have a few more games to feature every week probably one game from each group and then we'll go into the knockout stages and we'll follow each and every game through the stages there until we crown our champion of the ultra series circuit but i just want to say thank you so much for tuning in i hope you've enjoyed today's episode do give me some feedback let me know what your thoughts are on the format of this episode if you prefer the old ones if you prefer the new ones i feel like we've got a lot more room now to talk about the games and really feature these players one week at a time and it's really nice to be able to do that rather than sometimes where we've been rushing through them a little bit and it felt a little bit like i want to just give a little bit more room here to talk about it and discuss the matches a little bit so it'll be really great going forward like this for the next few weeks and like I say, I hope you've enjoyed them. So thank you so much for tuning in, guys. I will see you for the next one very soon. Do leave a like, subscribe, and leave your comments down below and let me know what your thoughts are on today's game. And I'll see you all for the next one. So until then, take care and bye-bye.